All right, we're gonna review for our quiz. It starts with some multiplying questions here. So we can just take 3m squared times both of these. We're using the distributive property. So, sorry, I think I said 3m. 2m squared times 5m is 10m cubed. And then 2m squared times 3, positive 3, is 6m squared. So that's a nice simple one. Uh, here we have the um, distributive property again. We can use FOIL as we talk about this, so we're going to do first. So 8n times n is 8n squared. 8n times 2 is 16n. Then here we got negative 8n, or negative 8 times n is negative 8n. And then we have the last, negative 8 times 2 is negative 16. Uh, as often happens, these two terms in the middle are like terms, so we can add those. So we have 8n squared plus 8n, because 16 minus 8 is 8, minus 16. And there we have that one. Uh, this last one, this is a binomial times a trinomial. So each term in the binomial needs to get multiplied by each term in the trinomial. So we're going to distribute this 3a. And after we do that, we'll distribute the negative 4. So 3a times a squared is 3a cubed. 3a times negative 5a is negative 15a squared. And 3a times negative 1 is negative 3a. Uh, the second part here, this negative 4, is going to get distributed to each of the three terms. So we have negative 4 times a squared is negative 4a squared. Negative 4 times negative 5a is plus 20a. And negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4. And now we're going to look for like terms. Uh, there's just one 3a cubed. There's just one a cubed, so we have the 3a cubed. There's a negative 15a squared and a negative 4a squared, so that's negative 20a squared. Sorry, negative 19a squared. Negative 3a and 20a is 17a, and then we have the plus 4. And so there's that product. Now this next slide has to do with what you need to just memorize. These are some special binomials, so two terms. So we have our um, special formulas for these two term ones. If we have a perfect square minus a perfect square, called the difference of squares, it's always going to be uh, in the form a plus b times a minus b. Know these, because uh, then we'll have to apply them in the next few problems. a cubed minus b cubed and a cubed plus b cubed are going to be very similar, as you'll see. Remember, this is just going to be a minus b times a squared plus ab plus b squared and then this one down here, you actually have the exact same variables here. The signs are just going to be different. So we have a plus b times a squared minus ab plus b squared. And we talked through different ways to remember this, but um, those are the two for the difference of cubes and the sum of cubes. Again, you make sure that you have them memorized. Um, I put them on the top of the screen just so we can reference them. Again, you should know them, um, so make sure you know them well. So what I have here under number 7, 125x cubed plus 1. The rest of this practice has to do with factoring, so remember when we, always, when we first start out trying to factor, we look for a common factor. Um, this one does not have any common factors, so we can just start like this, and then we think, does it, since it's a, Two terms, does it fit any of these three special situations? Um, and it does. 125 is a perfect cube. Uh, that's 5 cubed. So what I like to do here is I like to put, how do we get 125x cubed? Well, that's 5x cubed. So this is going to be equal to our a. And is 1 a perfect cube? Yes. What cubed gives you 1? 1 does. And so b is going to equal our 1. And we're going to go ahead and plug that in to this part right here, because that's our sum of cubes. So we have 
Again, I'm just going to reference this. It's a plus b, so our a is 5x, 5x plus 1, because 5x plus a plus b. And then we have a squared, a squared, so that's 5x. And we want to square that, so make sure you put that in parentheses so you see that it's squared. And then minus a times b, so minus a, which is 5x, times b, which is 1, and then plus, plus b squared, so plus 1 squared. So I'm writing out all the work here. Um, now we're going to simplify. This stays the same, 5x plus 1. And then within our other parentheses, 5x, the whole thing squared, so 5x times 5x is 25 x squared, uh, negative 5x times 1 is just negative 5x, and the last part, 1 squared is just 1. And so our answer for number 7 is this right here. Remember, you should know your perfect squares and perfect cubes for a while, so perfect squares. One squared is one, two squared is four, three squared is nine, four squared is 16, five squared is 25, six squared is 36, seven squared is 49, eight squared is 64, nine squared is 81, 10 squared is 100, 11 squared, 121, 12 squared, 144. We'll go a little bit further, 13 squared is 169, and 14 squared is 196. So. Uh, if you see these numbers, they are perfect squares, and then the perfect cubes, we don't go nearly as far with those. Um, I mean, they go on forever, but we'll just put a few that we need to be familiar with. One cubed, one times one times one is one. Two cubed is eight. Three cubed is 27. Four cubed is 64. And five cubed is 125. And we'll put up six cubed is 216. So those, you should be familiar with those different cubes. All right, so to number eight we go. Number eight, 16p squared minus nine. The first thing we always do is look for a common factor. There are not any common factors in 16 and nine. So we think, does it fit one of these special binomials? And uh, they both are perfect squares. Here I see nine and 16. So what I wanna do is I wanna think, well, what squared gives me 16p squared? And that would be 4p. So that's going to be a. What squared gives me 9? 3. So that's going to be b. And so all I have to do is use this part right here. This is going to be a plus b times a minus b. So 4p plus 3 times 4p minus 3. And there you have the answer to that one. That's it. That's all you do. All right, next one. 3x cubed plus 375. We look for a common factor. Well, this one has a 3, and so we want to check, does 3 go into 375? I believe it does. Um, so we can factor out a 3. So we factor out a 3. We have x cubed plus, if you need to, you can do this on the side or on a calculator, 375. 3 goes into 3 once. And actually, I'm seeing... 3 will go into 75, but here we go. We bring down our 7, 2, 6, 1, bring down the 5, and that goes in 5 times. So this is 125, which actually we've used that at 1 already. We had 125 over here. And so we think, does this binomial in the parentheses, once we've factored out the common factor of 3, does it fit one of our special binomials? It does. It actually, once again, fits the uh, sum of cubes. So what cubed gives me x cubed? Well, it seems too easy, but that's x, so we're going to plug x in for our a. What cube gives me 125? And that's 5, so b equals 5. Now what we do is we just we make sure we keep this 3 here, and we use our um, pattern here again. It's a sum of cubes, so we want a, which was x, plus b, which is 5, times a squared, which is x squared, minus, so again I'm looking up here, minus a times b, so x 
times 5, and then plus, come right here, b squared is 5 squared. And now we want to simplify what's inside that second group of parentheses, uh, which is really just x squared. We'll write this as minus 5x. Uh, 5 squared is 25. And there's our answer for number 9. And let's do number 10. The first thing we always do in factoring to see if there's a common factor. Um, I believe 4 goes into both of these. So 4 into 250. Well, maybe 4 doesn't go into 250. Sorry about that. 2 goes into both of these. 2 goes into this. Um, we don't even need to do that. That's going to be 125. So we see this 125 again. So 125x cubed. 2 goes into 16 eight times. And once we factor out the common factor, we want to see this is a perfect square. Uh, difference of squares or cubes or sum of cubes, and it actually fits a difference of cubes. What squared gives me 125x cubed? 5x. What cube gives me 8? 2. Well, 5x is going to be our a. What cube gives me 8? That's 2. So 2 is going to be b. And then we just plug it into our little formula, make sure we bring down this 2. And now we're using this one. So we have a, which is 5x, minus, because we have a minus here, minus b, which is 2, and then times a squared, so 5x, that whole thing squared, plus a, which is 5x, times b, which is 2, Um, and then plus b squared, so plus 2 squared. And we're going to simplify what's in parentheses there, that second group, 5x minus 2 here. 5x times 5x is 25x squared. 5x times 2 is 10x. And then 2 squared is 4. And so that's the answer to that one. So those are the ones that are binomials, and we used our special binomials here. The last six are trinomials, and we learned how to work through these. Again, even with the trinomials, the first thing we do is look for a common factor. There's not a common factor between these three. So then we put in uh, our two groups of parentheses, and we think through some of these things. As we'll talk through, how do we get a p squared well, we know p times a p gives us p squared. We next like to look at our sign, our second sign. How do we get a positive? Well, in order to get a positive, we need a negative times a negative. So a negative times a negative or a positive times a positive. And we know it's got to be a positive times a positive because we can look at that first sign. And the nice thing about when this is a coefficient of 1, we know the factors of 70 have to add up to be 17. So 1 in 70, 2 in 35, um, 5 in 14, 7 and 10, it's supposed to be 14. And which ones of these add up to equal or combine to give us 17? Will 7 and 10 do? So this is 7 and 10. That's it. We're done with that one. Number 12. First thing we do is look for a common factor. These are all even, so 2 can be factored into each of those. Factor out of 2, we have n squared minus 16n plus 2 goes into 120 60 times. Keep the 2 there. We're going to put our two groups of parentheses. We think, well, how do we get an n squared? Well, we know we need an n times an n. We want a plus 60. The only way we can get a positive is if, we have, is if we have two positives or two negatives. We need two negatives. And then there are a lot of factors of 60. 1 in 60, 2 in 30, 3 in 20, 4 in 15, 5 in 12, 
six and 10, seven, eight, nine, and we're back to this. So we, because our coefficient is one, we can think of the ones that combine to give us negative 16. And these are obviously gonna both be negative. Uh, so we need um, negative six and negative 10 here. Because, so this is our answer, but remember, we can check negative six n, the inner and the outer combined. So n times negative 10 is negative 10 n. These do negative six n and negative 10 n combined to equal negative 16 n. So this is the answer. This part was just a check. So you, sorry, I said that wrong. That's not the answer. This is the answer right here. And then this part we were just checking to make sure it gave us negative 16. Number 13, check for a common factor. 5p squared minus 14p plus 8. There's not a common factor there. So now this one's a little different. This is not a coefficient of 1. It's a coefficient of 5. So we have to think, how do we get a 5p squared? Well, to get 5, we're going to need a 5 and a 1. So 5p and p. That's our only combination um, or whole number combination to give us 5p squared. So we're going to try that. Uh, we have a plus here again. Plus 8, so we need two negatives. So negative and negative. And we, our factors of 8 are just 1 and 8 and 2 and 4. So we're just going to try different combinations to try to get this negative 14. So let's just try 1 and 8. See how that works. We're going to check inner. So that's negative 1p. Outer. Oh, 5p times negative 8 is negative 40p, which combined gives us negative 41. That is not what we want, so it's not 8 and 1, or 1 and 8. We could switch those. We can switch these and try 8 and 1. Let's try an 8 here and a 1 here which that definitely will give us different numbers. So let's get rid of this and this. Let's try those. So again, this is going to be a guess and check. As you get better at it, you'll be able to guess better probably. So we got a negative 8p minus 5p. That's negative 13p, still not what we want. So it's not going to be the 1 and 8. So we're going to have to try 2 and 4 or 4 and 2. So... Let's try something different. Um, let's try two or four and two. So this is going to be combined this inner part negative four p. The outer part is negative ten p. Well, this is good. You add them together, combine them, you get negative fourteen p. This is our answer. So some guessing and checking involved. Our next question here, first thing we do is look for a common factor, 18n squared plus 30n plus 12. Thinking through our different factors, it looks like 6 can go into each of those. So we can factor out a 6. We'd be left with 3n squared plus 5n plus 2. Now, it is important to get our highest common factor, which was 6. So we might have looked at this and be like, oh, two factors out of that. Um, once you did that, still check your remaining to see if anything else factors out. So nothing else factors out of 3, 5, and 2. So always factor out the highest common factor. All right, so now we have a 6 out here. We're going to use our two groups of parentheses. 3n squared, our only option is like 3n times n to get 3n squared. We have a positive 2. So we want two positives here. And the factors of two are one and two. So that's nice, not a lot of options. So let's try one and two. And then we check. So this is one n. Inner, outer is six n. One n plus six n is seven n, not what we want. Bummer. So now we have to go back and let's switch these and try two and one. That's really our only other option, so hopefully this will work, or else it won't be factorable. So we will try 2 here and 1 here. So combining these, this is 2n. The outer 
is 3n, 2n plus 3n does equal 5n. That is what we want, so this here is our answer. Coming down to our last two, we have, we obviously look for a common factor, 6, 49, and 45. 2 and 3 go into this, but 49 the only factor is 7, so no common factor. Now, what makes this one different is from the last two, this is a 6n. So in order to get a 6n, or sorry, 6p, we could have a 6p times p, or there's actually another option, 3p times 2p. So we'll, we'll work through some of these. If none of the 6p and 1p ones work, we'll have to try here. So these really can take a little bit longer if you have a composite coefficient. We have a minus here. So if we have subtraction, we need one positive and one negative. These two aren't set in stone. We might have to switch these at some point if we're getting the wrong sign. So let's try this out. 45, our factors of 45 are 1 and 45. Mm, 3 and 15. Or f Three and 15, uh, five and nine. So those are our different possibilities. Um, I, I did teach you a little hint here. We tried factoring anything in common out here. There was nothing to factor. So if there's nothing to factor here, you should never put in numbers in these binomials that will factor with this coefficient. So I don't want to put something that so um, 2 and 3 both go into 6. I don't want to put something that 2 or 3 goes into. So let me just show you. Um, I would not try 3 and 15 or even 15 and 3 because I have a common factor between 6 and 3. So I won't even try that because uh, you can't have common factors if you didn't have them here. So I don't want to try this with these two. I could try 1 and 45. I don't think that's going to work for me, but we'll try it out. Um, we have 1p, oh, and then 6 times negative 45. It's going to be quite a large number. I think that's going to be 270, negative 270p. If we combine those, they don't give us negative 49, so those are not correct. So let's go all the way back. We don't want to try 1 and 45. We can try 5 and 9. We wouldn't try 9 and 5. We would not try this because 3 goes into both of these, and that's what I was just mentioning earlier. So let's try this. We got 5p, and then, oh, this might work. 6 times negative 9 is negative 54p, and negative 54 and 5 is negative 49. So we did get it here, and that's good. Um, again, had, had that not worked, we could have ended up trying these, but we only have to try these, so we got this correct. Another thing I wanted to mention here, if, remember, if you get the wrong sign, so we did get the negative 49, but if they had added it together equal positive 49, we would have, want, would have wanted to switch these two signs. And finally, number 16. We look for a common factor. There are not common factors. So this actually is similar to number 15 in that to get a 10k squared, we have a couple options. We have, we could have a 2k times a 5k, or if none of those options work, remember we could have, how else do we get 10k squared? Well, we could have a 10k times a k. And maybe we'll get to that this time. We'll see our factors of eight are one and eight and two and four, so not a lot of options which is kind of helpful. Um, our sign here is plus 8. That means we need two positives or two negatives. In this case, we need two positives because we have a positive 21. And now we're just going to try some of our options here. Um, I really, if you think through this, I only have one option here with this group um, because I don't want to put 8 here or 2 or 4 because they would be able to factor with 2. So my only one to check is 1 and 8 in this group. 
So let's try that. That's 5k and 16k. And it's I love it when we get on the first try. 5k plus 16k is 21k. So this one is correct. You could, however, have to go through four or five or six guesses if these didn't work and you came down here. Um, but in this case, we got it on the first try. So there's the review for your quiz.